correct. Does anyone remember? I know we have to think back to before um, the holiday weekend, but does anyone remember we did all of 7.2 or just part of 7.2? And don't forget, you guys are initially muted, so if someone's talking, man, let me know. So I definitely want to make sure that we go over anything that you guys didn't understand from 7.2. Or did we finish it all? I think we went through it all. I think we went through it all. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So let's go on to 7.3. And what we're going to do is I'm going to screen share. Um, the blank notes uh, 7.3 and we're going to go over it like That's cool. Okay. Um, I probably need my calculator. Awesome. All right, what do you guys think? We're going to find the exact values of the tri trigonometric function of pi over four or 45 degrees. So what do we have to do there? Also, I wanna see if... Yeah. Bless you. I wanna see if, hold on, I'm gonna, stop sharing for a hot second guys because I want to see if we do the whiteboard which I could have swore we've done that before Okay, so if we share the whiteboard, can we also have in a file? Okay, evidently we cannot. That's not cool. That would be so neat. All right. Well, I tried. Maybe I'll have to keep playing around with that. Okay, so somebody tell me, tell me your thoughts. 
And do you guys all have this too? Or are you getting it off of the screen? Because if you guys all have this, then I don't need to have it up on the screen and we could go to the whiteboard. Uh, I don't have a paper copy, but I can print it out. Okay, because the other option is, is you guys could write it down. Let me know when to scroll down and then we can move over to the whiteboard after. I would use my regular whiteboard, but um, the closet wall that I have it hanging on is fake wall. So it literally just attacked me. So I cannot use it until we figure out a way to more securely keep it from falling on my head. All right. So if you guys want to write everything down, however you want to do it, I can also just verbally go through it with you. Also, if anyone needs anything for um, Pearson, just email me and let me know. And if you need any help, if you need to do a tutoring session, I can email you how to get, uh, get in with a tutor as well. Just let me know. Whatever you guys need, I am here to help. Okay, so how do you guys want to do this? Do you want me to let you guys copy it down and then we'll go over to the whiteboard? Or do you guys, because unfortunately I don't think I can, yeah, there's no like, no way I can like write onto it, which would be super awesome. I think doing it on the whiteboard is good. Okay, so do you guys want to just pull this up in a separate window? Because it's on Canvas. So you guys can pull it up on Canvas. It's just um, 7.3. Okay, so let's let's start out with the whiteboard. Okay. All right, so if we're talking about finding the exact values of the trig functions related to pi over four or 45 degrees, so let's, let's get that down there. Pi over four or 45 degrees. Okay, it says in the triangle below, the measure of the remaining angle is what? Well, that should be super easy for you guys to figure out. Obviously, that is not. Yeah, and there's not even a triangle option. So you'll have to just giggle at my very poor rendition of a triangle. And I am recording in case you guys want to come back in and rewatch, but um, nobody's missing, so. Okay, so we have 45, 90, and what? What has to be remaining? 45. Mm -hmm. Anyone not know how we got that? Okay. All right, so that is your first answer there. And then it says in the triangle below, the length of the remaining side is blank. So if this is A equals one, then 
B has to also equal what? If you have the same degrees, the legs are going to be what? Mm -hmm. So B is also equal to 1, which just makes our C equal to what? Huh, that kind of looks like a smiley face. Root 2. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. And I can't go through that with you guys, but if you don't need it, then we can just keep on moving on. All right, so we have done one, two, and three so far. The last thing left is to find our functions. So let's start with sine theta. I like to just go through and write all of them out and then we can go through and plug in your um, fractions. And I will try to find a better way for us to um, I'll try to do things to a little bit different each way until we can figure things out so we can find like the best approach. Ideally, what I would love to be able to do is just write on to the I'll write right on to the notes or um, or I guess find some way to work with the textbook a little bit more. But OK, so if we have sine of theta, of course, our theta in this case is equal to what? Two pi over four or 45 theories. Yep, I'm not going to go through and rewrite it, but if you want to write it on your paper the correct way, you can. I will make sure on my teacher notes when I post them that they will be um, written out, but I just had too much fun apparently making very terrible thetas for you. Okay, so sine of pi over 4 or sine of 45, we're going to have b over c or a leg over hypotenuse, which means we're going to have 1 over root 2. And is that where we're done or no? Can we stop no. there? No. OK, we have to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to end up with root 2 over 2. OK. What do you know of the cosine particular example? What do you guys think? What is interesting about the cosine? Isn't it the same as the sine? Very good, it is. So it would be one over root two, but we're just gonna go straight for root two over two. And then now for the tangent, um, we're just going to take your sine over your cosine which you guys can stop me if you get to it before I do. It's just one. Very good. It is just one. Okay. If you wanted to go through and prove it to yourself, you could, but it is just one. Which means, what's that make cotangent? One as well. Mm -hmm. And then, so we have secant, and that's going to be one over one over root two, which just makes it root two. And then cosecant is going to just be what? Can I move that? You guys think I can move that? Oh, 
Really? I have to move the whole thing? That's annoying. No, un, un, now what do I hit? All right, what the heck, guys? Okay. All right, sorry I can't give you more space there, but it's just gonna be route two as well. So what can you guys conclude for me about some of our angles? Like what conclusion can you get draw for me about um, pi over 4 or 45 degrees. What do you think? If you have two degrees the same and you have two legs the same, what can you draw from your trig functions? What's going to happen every time? Like you're going to have two trig phases that are the same? Mm -hmm. So you're, what do you know about these pairings? Sine and cosine and tangent and cotangent and secant and cosecant. What do you know about those? Aren't they co-functions? Mm -hmm. So your co-functions will always be the same if you have if you have two of the same angles and therefore that leads you have two of the same legs. So that you can use that little trick if you have to um, find all six trig functions and you're given um, that particular setup. So now that I figure out how to use this a little bit better, that's what we can say right there. We can say, If given two equal angles, oh, am I going dyslexic? All right, and let's save this. Okay, so that was saved. Any questions on exploration one? I guess that's how it's written down. What do you think? Any questions on that? Pretty neat trick, I think. But I mean, I also teach math for a living, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> All right, can I erase this? I did. Um, I did save it, so if you guys need it later, I have it. All right, so. All right. Okay. All right. So exploration two says find the exact values of the trig functions of pi over six or 30 degrees and pi over three or 60 degrees. Before we do anything, what do you guys predict? What prediction do you guys have for me? Think about the thetas we're going to be working with. So we'll have theta 1. That's going to be pi 
over six or 30 degrees. And we also want to find theta two, which is pi over three. or 60 degrees. Okay. So then the question I have, it says manipulate the triangle below to find the measure of side A. So let me draw you my very terrible drawing of a triangle. So we have 60, and we have 30, okay. We have C equals two, all right? And we need to find B, but before we find B, we have to find A, all right? What do you guys think, what do we have to do? Okay, so anyone have any ideas before I, for lack of a better term, better word, give it to you? I'm gonna give you a small hint and erase that for the moment. Like the triangle, like the 30, 60, 90 triangle? Yeah, so how can we find out what A is? It, and keep in mind, it says that the hint it gives you is that we're going to have to manipulate the triangle. So what ideas do you guys have? We could use sign to find A. What can we use to find it? Is that what you ask? Yeah, like we could use sine to find A. Like we use <gasps> sine over of pi over 60 to find A. Do we yeah. have everything that we need for that? But well, we have two as our hypotenuse and then we have our degrees. Right, so it's kind of going to be a little bit of an abstract idea, but if we if we draw a congruent triangle, okay, basically that mirror image. So we would have 60 down here again and 30 up here. What would we know about this length? The hypotenuse again would be what? Two. Mm -hmm. It'd be two. And then the bottom would be? The entire length would be two as well. Right. So you would end up yeah. essentially having A plus A equals two. So then you would have two A equals two. So then what's what's A give you? One. One, okay. So if A is equal to one, now we're gonna have to use Pythagorean theorem to yeah. figure out B. Apologies for how terrible I write on this whiteboard. <laughs> I don't know which whiteboard I write worse on, but <laughs> I feel like it's a kind of a toss up. So we have a squared plus b squared 
equals c squared. We know we were given um, 2 for c, so that's 4. And 1 squared is 1 plus b squared. So minus 1 minus 1. So b is oh, root, equals root 3. Root 3. Very good. Okay. So I am going to get rid of this little equal sign so you guys don't think that a equals a. Okay. So now that we have all of that, um, now we can find all of our signs, right? Or all of our functions. Um, I think what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to type them out um, so that I can have a little bit more room, if that's okay with you guys. We have to get all 12 of them on here. And I'm using um, just the degrees, but you guys could use the uh, radians. It doesn't matter. However you guys feel comfortable with it. You can also have them written down in a different order. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm also going to write it again over here for 60 degrees. All right, so while I was typing that, did anyone anyone go ahead and, and start? Um, <clears throat> sine of 30 is uh, 1 over 2. Cosine of 30 is 3 over 2. Tangent of 30 is, um, oh, what's, um, 1 over root 3, which would be root 3 over 3. Mm -hmm. And then cosecant of 30 is 2. Secant of 30 is mm, 2 over root 3, which is So it's, so secant will be your one over root three over two. So don't forget your two. Tangent is just root three. Yeah. Okay, so two root three over three. Mm. Okay. So I know it's a little bit messy with the way I have it written here. I promise I will also write it out for you guys in my teacher notes, but hopefully you can all kind of see that for the moment. And then what do you guys think about about the opposite angle? Give me some thoughts on it. What do you know about these two angle types? What are they? They're what?
they're like opposing of each other kind of um so they both add up to what they add up to what to get the complementary as well though. yeah so they're complementary so because they're complementary we're gonna find something interesting out what do you think we're gonna find out Uh, it's the it's just gonna be the inverse of. Mm, so it's not gonna be the inverse per se. They actually end up being. Oh no, no, you're right. Um, so the it's not really the inverse, but the co-function is going to be the co-functions will be equal. So your sine of 30 is going to be equal to your what for 60? Your sine of 60. Not the sine of 60, but the... So the co-functions are going together. So the sine of 30 will equal the cosine of 60. There it is. Okay. Yep. Yep. So if you wanted, you could play like, you know, match them up, but I'm just going to rewrite it in. So the sine of 60 goes with the cosine of 30. So sine of 60 is just equal to root 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 then is 1 half. Now the tangent is equal to cotangent of 30 so it's going to be root 3 but I don't want to squeeze it in there so I'm just going to go like this and the cosecant that's the same as the secant and they're actually right next to each other so I am going to just draw a line there and then your secant will just be two. And then your cotangent is root three over three. Okay. So help me out. How can we summarize that kind of situation? I think, I think we kind of just did, didn't we? How did we say that before? So we have to think about what kind of angle types do we have? Complementary, right? between the angles. Does that make sense to you guys if I say it like that? I want to make sure you guys understand it and not just my brain understands it. So complementary angles, meaning our 30 and our 60, will allow us to have equal co-functions between the angles. So not necessarily the co-functions of one angle, but if you look at them together as a set. Okay, so as long as you guys understand that. I think, was that all of our questions for that one? It was. Okay. So if you guys are following along with the blank notes, you'll see a table. It basically just very nicely sums up what we just learned in the past two examples. So I'm not going to go through it, but I will put it up um, in my teacher notes. I will write it in for you guys. So are you good on this one? Can I save it? have to make sure to uh, 
have to make sure to find out where that's saving to mess stuff up. Okay, I'm sure we'll have to save again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear. Is everybody good? Yeah? Okay. All right. So we want to look at next the example of we want to find the exact value for each expression. So we want to find sine squared of pi over 3 plus tangent squared of pi over 4. Now, this is where having your nice chart written in already would really help you out. But um, we're just going to go through it together. So how would we how would we write this out? What do we know about sine of pi over three? We just did that one. We just did that one, right? So it's sine of 60, which is what? Um, root three over two. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do root three over two squared and then tangent of four uh, pi over four. One. That was the one we did before, right? So that's one. Good. And we're squaring it, so that just looks odd. Okay, so root three squared is just going to be a three. Two squared is a four plus one. So what's our answer? Seven fourths. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that one is done. And if we look at B, it wants us to do the sine of 60 degrees plus, nope, not plus, I lied, times the cosine of 45 degrees. So sine of 60, we just figured that out. In fact, we also, did we just use it? No, we didn't. Yeah. Uh, sine of 60 is root three over two. And cosine of 45 is root two over two. Okay. So what are we gonna do? Multiply. So that is mm, oh. root of six over four. Okay. Is that it? We're done there. As long as everybody agrees. All right, then we have next cosine of pi over three minus cotangent of pi over four. Okay, so cosine of pi over three. Cosine of pi over three is uh, one half, mm -hmm. one over two. And then minus cotangent of pi one. over four. Yep. Yeah. One again. Okay. So then just negative one half. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So once you guys know the exact values of some of these trig functions, and once you kind of are working with them long enough, you'll be able to just go through right away. And great. 
I wanted to make sure I knew where it was saving to. Okay, so I went ahead and I saved those. We should be good to go. Let's keep moving on. And I think... Okay, cool. We're like halfway done. All right, so for example two, and I don't know why the book and the teacher notes, the examples don't really match. It's always like the notes call them explorations and the book just calls them examples. I mean, to me, they're all just examples. All right, so it says, use a calculator to approximate the values of a trigonometric function of acute angles. Find the approximate value of the following. Use a calculator fi to find the approximate value of cosine 15 degrees to two decimal places. So if you guys need me to, I can screen share my calculator, but I'm assuming most of you will know how to do this. What do you have to make sure you do in your calculator before you try to give me an answer? What do you guys think? Sorry, is that cosine of five degrees or? 15. Okay. Sorry. Is it a quarter? Well, you want to make sure that your mode is in what? Oh, you'd make sure it'd be in degrees, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. So make sure before you give me an answer that your mode is in degrees, because if you leave it in radians, I will tell you what the difference is. So if you use radians and you try to find your answer, you're going to get a negative 0.76 if you round up. Um, so if you have it in degrees, what do you guys get? Point 0.966 six mm -hmm. if you're rounding up. Yep. And it only wants two decimal places, so we are going to round to 0. 0.9, and I'll leave this 6, uh, 5, yeah. 9, uh, just to show kind of some more digits. And then if we're going to two decimal places, it'll be 0. 0.97. Nine, seven. Nine, seven. Very good. And then the next one they want you to do is they say use a calculator to approximate the value of secant of 10 to two decimal places. Now, let me ask you guys this. They did not have the degree symbol. It just says secant and then the number 10. So do you guys think that we should do that answer as a radian or as a degree? What would you do? Uh, radians. OK, I would also pick radians. Um, if for whatever reason, sorry, that's really terrible. If for whatever reason on the Pearson product, it gives you an issue, then I would try doing it the opposite. But I would agree that you should use uh, radians. So if we're looking for secant, what are we going to have to do? I don't know about you guys, but the calculator I'm using at this particular moment in time is a um, is a simulator on my cell phone because I haven't set up my new one since my old one broke. I think um, secant is one over uh, cosine. Okay, we all in agreement with that? Over cosine theta, so cosine 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we make that match in our calculators, what are you guys getting? What am I? I was in. Okay. Okay. So 
again, since we don't really know if they wanted degrees there or radians, I'll give it to you um, in both answers. So if it's in radians, I want you guys to give it to me as if it were radians, and then I want you guys to give it to me as if it's in degrees. Go ahead and just practice doing both because we don't know what the Pearson might want. So what are you guys finding? In radians, I got negative 0.84. You did 1 over cosine and then 10? Wait. I forgot to add the dividing, the dividing thing. That's okay. Negative 1.19. Good. Okay. Did anyone find it in degrees? 1.02. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm just going, going to go ahead and have both down for you, um, just because I have no idea based on, and I'll probably do the same in my teacher notes for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this for you guys and clear it, and then I'm going to attempt to draw this very terrible drawing. I already know it's going to be terrible. So if we have, and you guys will have to use your imaginations. Okay, so we're going to transpose or pretend like that is part of a mountain face. Okay. From C to B is 100 feet. Okay. Stop that. There's A, and our degree here is 35 degrees. But I don't care, go up here. Okay. So, we want to find the distance from A to C across a gorge. So, we're essentially finding this leg, which I guess we'll call... Okay, so we don't know C either, but we don't really need to determine what C is, we just don't know it yet. So all we basically know is, I guess since we're working in trig, we know that's a right angle. What do we know then has to be this angle? 55. 55. Okay. 
So, how are we going to find from A to C? What do you guys think we can do? I guess we could also call it B if that makes it easier. We're just going to say it's an unknown. We don't know what this is, and that's what we want from A to C. What do you guys think? What? What function do you think will help you guys? Tangent. Okay. So tangent of what we were given. So tangent of the 35. Mm -hmm. So tangent of 35 degrees. Make sure your calculators are in degrees. It's going to equal our unknown over the length we were given, so over 100. So then B is equal to 100 times the tangent of 35 degrees. So what does that roughly equal? 70.02. I'm going to believe you. You made sure you, it was in degrees? Probably. Okay. Uh, so we don't, we're not told what we have to round to, so we'll just keep rounding to two decimal places. So 70.02, and that would, of course, be feet. Now, if this were on a test, I'm not going to lie, I'd probably ask you to find me everything. So then you would have to go through, you would then use this to help you do the Pythagorean theorem and you'd find C, and then that would be it. And you probably, I, if it would depend on the test, but if I just wanted to give you guys like a quiz and I had an application problem like this, you'd probably have to just find all six um, functions at this point. Eventually there's going to come a point where functions will just be, um, you'll just be working with them so long that I won't have to keep testing you on them. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this. Anyone have any questions on how we found it? No? Okay, because keep in mind you will have to do stuff in the Pearson if you're not already ahead. Okay, so this next one, we are going to model and solve an applied problem involving right triangles. Of course, we just did that. Um, so I will read it to you. I want you guys to pay attention and we're going to have to draw a picture that models the situation and then find the height of the cloud cover. So it says, a meteorologist, meteorologists find the height of a cloud using an instrument called a silometer, something like that. It consists of a light projector that directs a vertical light beam up to the cloud base and a light detector that scans the cloud to detect the light beam. On December 1st of 2000, at Midway Airport in Chicago, the solometer, sil solometer with a base of 300 feet was employed to find the height of cloud cover. If the angle of elevation of the light detector is 75 degrees, 
what is the height of the cloud cover? And I want to see if any of you guys can either talk me through the picture or someone can take over the screencast. Let me know if you would like to, which way you would like to do that. You could also maybe hold your picture up to the camera. You can make All right. So is a salometer or a cilometer on the ground? Um, yeah. So I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys have the textbook or not, but my best description for you is it kind of looks like it kind of looks like a spotlight going straight up into the air, like straight up from the ground, like a projector, like a light projector. And then you have what's called a light detector. So I guess I can go ahead and do the drawing for you, but you guys can tell me what we're putting where, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we're going to have this beam of light, which we'll see if I can make it. Uh, cool. We will see if I can make it. Huh, I can. Yellow. I just found the straight line, guys. That's great. Okay. So then we have the ground, which we will make. Very cool. This is neat. It's getting neater by the moment. And since my favorite color is red, awesome. Look at that. So cool. All right. So now tell me what I'm putting where. So the base is 300 feet. So where am I putting that at? On the green line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have the angle of elevation for the light detector, which I will tell you guys that the light detector yeah, it goes in between the yeah. red line and the green line. Yeah, so that's 75 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I will tell you guys that if you're not in physics yet, um, much like physics and calc, trig, you're going to have to do a lot of drawings. So just rip the Band-Aid off now and just start doing them because they will help you out significantly. Okay, so our yellow is the height. We just don't know that yet. That's one of the ones we're gonna find out. And I think that's it. Yeah, you just had to draw the model. So there's the model. <clears throat> I guess if you really wanted to be accurate, we could draw. There's a cloud. There you go. That's a cloud. Um, we'll keep it up with red. Okay, so how are we going to find height, which I feel like this looks very similar to the last problem. So how do we, what function yes. helps us the best? Um, it's tangent. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use tangent again. So this time, what I can do though is I can, I guess, take it one more step for you. So if we do tangent of 75 degrees, that's going to equal our height over the 300, which we then would bring the 300 over. And the tangent of 75 degrees. 
So what does that give us for our H? Uh, 1,119.615, so 0. 0.62. And let's just assume that for height, we're going to round to the next feet. So it'll be 1,120 feet. If you guys gave me an approximation versus, um, like if you gave me the 1,119.65 or whatever it is, if you gave me that, and didn't round to the nearest foot, I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna take it off. Like you have the answer right. I'm not, if, if you round wrong or not really wrong, but if you round and it is a discrepancy with Pearson, please email me. I do go through the quizzes, but I don't really go through the homeworks because I assume you guys can do them over and over and over again. Um, and you'll just figure them out, but um, please, please email me and I will definitely, I will fix it for you. Did I already save this one? I think I did, but I'll just save it again in case I didn't. Okay, do we all have this one? Are we good to go? Do you have any questions on the application of this particular question? All right, so this is kind of similar to what's in our book, but a little different. So I will read it to you. And keep in mind, you wanna pay attention because the first thing we're gonna have to do is we will have to draw a picture of the situation again. So it says, to, to measure the height of Lincoln's caricature on Mount Rushmore, two sightings, 800 feet from the base of the mountain are taken. If the angle of elevation at the bottom of Lincoln's face is 32 degrees and the angle of elevation of the, to the top is 35 degrees, what is the height of Lincoln's face? So, man, I really wish, I really wish I could Okay, so there's that, and we'll just say there's one head, there's a second head, there's a third head, and there's only four of them, right? I mean, I don't teach history, so trying to remember. Uh, All right, so if we're doing this from the ground, that means we have at least, so we had our base, right, of 800. So you guys tell me, which one do you want to be Lincoln? The, like which one of these triangles or diamonds? It doesn't matter to me. I don't even, I, I cannot tell you which one Lincoln is because I, I know what he looks like, but it's been a very long time since I've seen that figure. So does anyone know which head is Lincoln's? If you don't, you can just tell me which diamond you want me to use. Or is anyone looking it up? We all have phones, right? What? The last one. You're probably right. Images. I'll believe you. Yes, you are correct. Hey, look at that. Good job. Okay, so from here then, okay, 
Okay, we're gonna have something there. And then I guess we'll make it a uh, sky blue. Um, how many lines are we gonna have? Two, right? So we're gonna have one from, say, there, and one from a little bit higher. Okay. So, what is our base? I've read it to you, but you guys can... Anyone remember what the length of our base is? Or do you need me to read it again? I feel like I'm losing folks. We're almost done, I promise. It's the last example. Okay. So your base is 800 feet. And that goes the whole length of the green line. And then your elevation points are what? This is 30. 35 and 32 degrees. Yeah, so the smaller one is inside. And then I'm going to write it so the, I'm just going to draw an arrow, so 35. And then I'll try to draw it better in my teacher notes. Don't, I only have a ruler. I need to get myself a geometry kit, apparently. OK, so we have drawn the diagram to the best of our ability model. So if we want to find the height of Lincoln's face, how are we doing that? I'll give you a hint. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to find the two heights and do what to them? Can we just also add like the degrees and then find it that way? Um, we can, you can do that experiment. I'll let you do that and you can let us know. Okay. Okay. So let me know, like, you know, once we find our answer, you can either tell me, yeah, you were right on point or no, it was super way off and you don't know what happened. So just let us know, because that would be a cool approach to it. So the other option is we're going to find the two heights, and then we're going to subtract them, right? So we're going to find the tangent. We're going to find the tangent of 32. Nope, I want to do it the right way. So 35 degrees, which is going to equal h1 divided by 800 feet. And then the other one you're going to do is the tangent of 32 which will be h sub 2 divided by 800 feet. And once you find your h's you're going to subtract to find your total head height. So what do you end up getting?
Anybody get one? What's the first one? Tangent of 35 degrees times 800 gives us what? Uh, that gives you 560.166. Okay, you are correct. So 500 and 60.166. I'm not gonna round it yet. Um, if we had multiple answers, I would round that to 560 feet. Okay, and then your tangent of 32 degrees times 800, somebody else? 499.89. Yes. 499.89. Okay, and if we subtract our answers, So you'll get what? Someone else. What do you get when you subtract your answers? Uh, you get 60.27. Okay, so probably just going to leave it at 60 feet. Mm -hmm. But we'll write it down both ways so you can see. All right, so that definitely makes sense to me if we check it out real quick how tall is lincoln's face What? So it says that the head of George Washington is 60 feet tall with a nose that is 21 feet tall and that Theodore Roosevelt's head is slightly smaller and Abraham Lincoln's is slightly taller. So yeah, I guess 60 feet works, but it's not exactly true. Mm. It's a little bit, a little bit bigger than that. Okay. So any questions on how we do this kind of stuff, how we move it from, um, you know, one, from, from just your conceptual, what is a trig function to the application? Also, did you find out, did it work doing the? Yeah, no, it didn't. No, it doesn't, okay. I didn't think so, but that would have been, Heckin' cool if we could have figured a way out to do that. That would have been neat. Um, so from what I know, I don't think there's a second way to do that. I mean, if as we continue to learn, maybe maybe we'll find some some extra ways out to do things. I'm always down for some experimentation. So if you guys have an idea, um, that's probably going to be what I'm going to tell you. I'm probably going to tell you to to um to go ahead and try it because that's really the best way to know math is is to just um is to just go ahead and, and do it like that so totally awesome any any questions that you guys have for me um anyone need anything in terms of pearson I just need to know what is like the assignments for the week so I can just write it down for myself. Sure. Let, uh, me, let me grab that for you. And I'll get that for everybody. Just give me one second.
<laughs> my computer's being well, it's probably not my computer. Pearson is being a little slow. What are you doing? That's not even the page I asked you to be on. There we go. Okay, so... We have 7.3 that will be due by 11.59 tonight. Now, does anyone have to go to work? Okay, you guys have to go to work? All right. So I will I will push it to being due tomorrow at 11.59. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. And then I think the next one isn't due until the 14th. And that's 7.4, and we will do 7.4 on Monday. So, yeah, we will see how we do with 7.4. If you need me to move it to be due Tuesday at 11.59 again, then I will. But I'll, I'll go in right now and change um, 7.3 to be due tomorrow night, okay? Anybody else need anything? 